the Indian context, uh, this particular project uh, will bring in another variety of the blended cements. India has moved into the path of blended cements uh, quite, quite a few years back, essentially from the environmental considerations. And India today produces roughly about 75% of the total production in the blended cement form. Now, what we have been doing so far is only one type of blending material at a time can be mixed with uh, cement. And this particular product, this gives two blending materials to be blended with cement. Now, this novelty of the technology is important from many other considerations of uh, carbon dioxide emission, uh, from the point of view of cost savings, from the point of view of energy. So, a new type of blended cement will be a kind of an incentive for the Indian cement industry to look into this new technology. India has got uh, a very large uh, reserves of uh, kaolinite clay. Uh, even now, if my memory goes right, it's more than uh, two billion tons of uh, reserves are there for uh, uh, kaolinite clay. And it is fairly distributed in different parts of the country. Some of the states have got relatively more, some of the states relatively less, but it's fairly uniformly distributed. More interestingly, you know, where the fly ash uh, availability is uh, scarce relatively, the clay availability is there. So this will be uh, another advantage that the industry can derive, that they can really utilize clay instead of very expensive uh, fly ash at those locations. In cement making, normally the uh, carbon dioxide emission comes from two sources. One is the limestone as the primary raw material and the other is the fuel that is fired. Uh, in the kiln. And these two together constitute the, the ultimate uh, emission that takes place in making of the cement. Not really making of the cement, I must correct, making of the clinker. And this clinker is further ground into cement. Now, since this clinker making entails so much of carbon dioxide emission, the idea is that you reduce the consumption of the clinker in the final cement. And in that process, from same one ton of clinker, you produce maybe two tons of cement instead of what is earlier produced, maybe 1.25 tons of cement. So, to that extent, I save in terms of the carbon dioxide emission for clinker making. Now, the question comes that when I use uh, clay and limestone, at that point of time, am I really uh, creating further carbon dioxide emission or not? Fortunately, what happens that clay calcination is a very low temperature, uh, you know, event. And normally we calcine at a temperature of about, say, 700 degrees or so. So therefore, energy uh, consumption there is pretty low. And the limestone part, we are not decomposing at all. 
we are using it in the natural form. So therefore, there is no release of carbon dioxide from the limestone component in the new product. So we are saving in three places. One is that carbon dioxide emitting clinker proportion we are reducing substantially. We are substituting that by clay which does not really generate carbon dioxide because of the very low temperature calcination. And the third is that the limestone when I use as a raw material I release carbon dioxide whereas when I use as an additive in the cement I don't use carbon dioxide, I don't release carbon dioxide. So this is how we believe that uh, there will be significant saving in the carbon dioxide emission.